Um, I want to ask about your current policy in this crisis, but first, if you'll indulge me, I'd like to ask something of a historical nature first. Um, I assume, you'll correct me if I'm wrong, that in preparation for President Biden's first summit with President Putin, held in Geneva last June, the national security team undertook a comprehensive review of the official documentary record of all the interactions that President Trump had with President Putin. You may recall during the Trump presidency, we saw reporting to the effect that Mr. Trump and or his aides took some steps to uh, prevent the uh, maintenance of a full record of those interactions. Um, without asking you to disclose any classified information, can you assure us on two points? Number one, <coughs> did your review uncover any evidence of any effort at any point along the way in the creation and storage of those records uh, to tamper with that process? And number two, did your review uncover any evidence of any impropriety of any kind or severity on the part of President Trump in his interactions with President Putin? Uh, on that question, I've got nothing for you. Okay. So current policy, then. Um, this administration has tried without success to use sanctions to compel the military in Myanmar to abandon its coup d'etat. This administration has used sanctions without success to compel China to release the concentration camp inmates in Xinjiang. The Obama administration, of course, used sanctions without success to try to deter a Russian annexation of Crimea. Here you stand again, brandishing the threat of sanctions to try to deter a Russian invasion of Ukraine. Why shouldn't this be perceived as clinging to a failed tactic? And why shouldn't President Putin assess on that basis that his adversary is operating from a position of relative weakness? President Putin has indicated that what he does not want to see uh, is further NATO force posture coming closer to his border. President Putin has indicated that what he does not want to see is further American uh, and allied support uh, to Ukraine. President Putin has indicated that what he does want to see is the further strengthening of Russian strategic industries in the Russian economy. We have laid out on all of those metrics that Russia um, will suffer costs and consequences in the event of a further invasion of Ukraine. And he can make his own determination about what he wants to do. But the United States is going to act. We're going to act with our allies and partners on those issues in those ways. We have the capacity to do that, and we will do that. And President Biden has been clear that that's what we intend to do. Have you seen sanctions yeah. work? Well, so first, I would say that if you go back to uh, a personal experience I had, which was the negotiation of the first the interim agreement and then contributing to uh, the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, we do believe that economic pressure on Iran had a meaningful impact on bringing it to the table and ultimately putting a lid on its nuclear program. There are other instances where sanctions have worked. And of course, there are instances across administrations, Democrat and Republican alike, where sanctions have not achieved the full result. Uh, and so I'm not going to stand before you and say sanctions are a panacea. They're a tool that solves every problem. But remember, sanctions are only one part of the way that we and our allies are talking about how we will deal with a potential Russian invasion of Ukraine. We have other tools to bring to bear as well. Those tools also bear on the interests and the security capacities of the Russian Federation. And our goal at the end of the day here is not to get into an escalatory spiral. It is to find a way forward uh, consistent with our principles, consistent with our interests, and consistent with open, transparent consultation with our allies uh, to pursue diplomacy. If that works, great. If that doesn't work, we're ready. Yeah. Uh, with all of that said, is the 